today what we're going to do is talk about several methods for measuring airflow uh, in a house. So whether if we're talking about uh, bath or kitchen exhaust fans, measuring whole house ventilation, or uh, total system airflow, measuring HVAC supplies and returns, uh, we'll show you a few different methods of how to do that. Um, so uh, to start with, uh, if you're uh, if you're new to our webinar series, uh, some things that I've been doing here lately. Uh, this is a test chamber that I built last year, uh, and it's built to simulate basically anything. Uh, it can be a house, commercial building, HVAC system, whatever. Um, and so we're going to use it uh, to replicate uh, several different scenarios today. Um, we've got a blower door here that's going to serve uh, as a couple of different exhaust fans. Uh, there's another duct tester that we have over here that's going to serve uh, as a couple of different things, too. And I've got a secondary camera I'm going to switch to get you guys closer in on some shots, too, as we do some different measurements. Um, and so I'll just kind of explain what's happening as we uh, as we continue to change things up. So this will be a pretty active webinar, active for me anyway. I'm going to be moving around quite a bit. Uh, I've got a cheat sheet over here that I'll keep referring to that I put together yesterday just to keep myself on task. But uh Feel free to ask questions. Uh, we'll stop about halfway through, and then uh, we'll stop again at the end uh, to take some questions there too. We should have some time left over for that. So um, what I'm gonna start with first is uh, measuring exhaust flows with uh, the flow box. So if you've never seen this before, this is an exhaust fan flow meter. Uh, and you'll notice that it has uh, four plugs in here. And it's the exact same plugs that we use in our blower door systems. So if you, it's kind of a two in one tool. So if you have all four of these holes plugged up, you can use it as a pressure pan with your blower door uh, as you're depressurizing the house to negative 50 Pascals. You can go around with this with another DM32 and uh, see how leaky walls or ceilings are. You can look at leakage and can lights and things like that uh, just to see how well things are sealed up or see how loose and leaky things are. Uh, but of course, if you pull out one more or all of the plugs, uh, it'll work as an exhaust fan flow meter. And that's for exhaust flows only. So what this is good for is for bath fans, uh, some kitchen exhaust fans, like the builder grade ones that are gonna be a, a lower flow, not the monster kitchen hoods that some people will get installed, but we, we will show you how to measure that too. Um, we, uh, we use this a lot for measuring whole house ventilation. So you can use it from uh, the exterior of the house uh, so if you're measuring a, uh, an intake for a ventilation system, you can do that. And uh, if you are, if you do find yourself using it on the exterior, uh, if you have a rough surface like uh, lap siding, kind of a cheat that you can do uh, to get a better seal uh, that I find helpful is getting some one inch rubber pipe insulation uh, to put around the gasket of that flow box. And it just gives you more of a compressible thicker gasket to get a better seal around those rough surfaces like lap siding. I've seen some people try to take their grill mask and just kind of tape around the intake to give it a flush surface, but that doesn't really do anything because you still have air passing underneath the tape. So uh, getting uh, some of that pipe insulation to use to give you a, a better cushion there. It doesn't seal it perfect, but it's better than it would be. Otherwise, it's better than trying to use tape. So um, that's just a tip I have for that. But uh, I am going to go ahead and switch cameras so you guys can get a better look uh, at what's going on here. And first, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and turn this blower door on. This will serve as our, our ventilation fan. And then what we're going to do is measure this. So we're going to pull an exhaust here and then use the, the flow box to measure uh, what it is we're going to get here. So we'll go ahead and get some air moving. And let me switch you guys over so you can get a better view. There we go. So I'm gonna move you over here. Get a view of the manometer there. Angle you up just a little bit there. So that's our, uh, it can be our bath fan, it can be uh, ventilation, 
whatever it is. So you can see if I put some smoke to this, we are pulling in an exhaust through here. So our flow box will work fine for this. And you can see uh, on the DM32 that we're gonna use for this, we recently had a software update for the DM32. Uh, so if you download the DM32 configurator on, uh, on your PC, you can, uh, you can get this new update. So what, uh, one thing that it includes, if you go into your devices, you can cycle through and the flow box is now an option. Uh, it used to be that you had to use the whole flow function, but now uh, we have it in there. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start on uh, having one plug open. And uh, you'll notice that we have both the blue port and the yellow port connected on channel A and channel B. And we want to make sure that we're reading Pascal's on channel A and CFM on channel B. The reason why we have both channels connected is that we want to keep an eye on this pressure as we're reading flow. So I'll show you why. Um, whenever you're using the flow box, you want to make sure that that channel A pressure is going to be somewhere between negative two and negative 10 pascals. You don't want to be outside of that window. Otherwise, uh, the accuracy drops off. So if I put this on there and that's with one hole open, you can see I've exceeded that negative 10. So what that's telling me is that I need to go down. So, uh, Let's try, uh, let's shoot for four and see if that'll do it for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the rest of these out. And that puts us in there nicely. So we're, we're under 10, we're over negative two. And we can see our CFM there is about 190 uh, that we're pulling here. The, the max CFM that you can pull with this flow box is, a, I think it's 208 or uh, 203, I believe is where it maxes out. So we're about to max out this right now. Um, so this would be like a, uh, you know, a builder grade kitchen exhaust or something like that. Uh, maybe some ventilation for a really large house or large building. Uh, usually you don't see bath fans that high, but, uh, but yeah, that's about where that uh, flow box is going to max out right there. So that's uh, just kind of the quick and dirty on the flow box. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it from this gauge because we're going to use it for something else in a little while. We're going to keep our fan running. Um, so the next thing I'm going to show you is... Uh, Get you guys flipped back around here. There we go. The next thing I've got uh, that we're going to do is looking at supply and exhaust flows from the ACE and Flow Finder, uh, which is this right here. So this is what's known as an active or powered flow hood. So. It actually has its own calibrated fan built into it, has its own high precision manometer. So um, basically what it does is it pressure matches whatever flow that it feels and then uses its own fan to zero that out to see what the flow is. So this is the most accurate uh, flow hood that's on the market, but uh, it's what's referred to as a low flow hood. So it'll go down to, a you know, down to seven uh, CFM of flow all the way up to just over 500 CFM. So great for residential properties, great for looking at HVAC supplies, um, some room returns and things like that. You can't do total system airflow with it uh, unless it's a, a pretty small system. Uh, again, it's gonna max out around 500 CFM there, but um, it, comes, uh, it comes with a smaller hood than this. This, uh, this is a 24 by 24 inch uh, fabric hood that you can get for it. The hood that the system comes with is the smaller uh, hard uh, plastic uh, hood here that just, uh, that hood will snap off and you can snap this one on. So this is a 16 by 16 inch. One thing to keep in mind, uh, if you have one of these, um, if you use this hood, there's a flow correction factor that you have to apply and it's in the manual. It's pretty simple. But uh, it's not just the raw number that you're going to use off the flow finder if you're using this hood. 
there is a, a correction factor, uh, factor that you have to apply there. But if you use the 24 by 24 inch hood, like I'm going to do today, you can just take that raw number right off of it. And that's your flow. So, um, one question that we usually get about this is the battery. So I'm going to show you how to do that right quick. Uh, this handle just screws off. The battery just kind of sticks on like that. Got to make sure it goes the right way. The hole usually goes down. There we go. And then this just screws right back on top of it. And then the power button is uh, right here on the display. So I'm going to get you guys flipped around again, and uh, we'll take an airflow measurement with it. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we, we have our fan still running. Um, we are going to look at this little slot here. So this will be our, uh, this will be our exhaust that we're going to measure. Uh, as you can see, uh, we're still pulling. Still pulling in that same direction. So again, this can uh, symbolize a bath fan or a small return or something like that. And when you use this, once you get it turned on, let's get this display up here. There's a little red button right here. So right when you get the, the flow finder tightly sealed over whatever it is that you're going to measure, you're just going to tap that button and then it just kind of takes off from there. So let's see if you can get you guys in here so you can see what's going on. There we go. That's pretty good. So I'm up to it. I'm going to go ahead and tap that button. And there's a message on there that says compensating pressure. That fan's ramping up. And there we go. So let's see if you can see that screen. It just kind of saves it there for us. It's a little blurry for you guys if I can get it at a good angle. There we go. I think you can see it says about 77.6 CFM. And the cool thing about this flow hood is there's a little slot over here where I can keep an SD card. So if you have an SD card in there, you can just press store and then save uh, all the flows that you read. So you don't have to keep a pen and paper. Uh, does all that for you. Uh, let's see. I'm going to flip you guys. Oh, we'll keep. Yeah, we'll flip you over again. So that's the that's the ASIN powered flow hood. Um, but you can actually do something very similar to that with your duct tester system. So I'm going to pull, I've got one on a cart over here. I'm going to pull up. And I'll get the secondary camera ready again. But uh, what you see here, uh, the clear flange that usually comes with the duct test system, you would take that off. And then we have this accessory hood that you can use. It's a 24 by 24 inch uh, hard hood that you see here. Uh, it's got the blue ports uh, on it. So you would uh, take a piece of blue tubing and plug it onto that so that it can read the pressure inside of this hood. And then you can use your duct tester just like uh, we just used the flow finder there, uh, the pressure match, and then you can see what that. So I'm going to take that same DM32 that we used, and then uh, I'm going to hook up the other end of this umbilical. So that we can get our flow displayed there. Um, one thing that I have found to be helpful when, if you're going to measure airflow with your duct tester like this, instead of letting the gauge automatically take you there, I find that it's easier to just use the manual dial. Um, it's just easier to and, and faster to zero it in that way. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do today. 
And uh, on your DM32, you, you hook it up the exact same way as if you're about to do a duck test. So green to green, yellow to yellow, and blue to blue. So I'm gonna stick that back here. I'm gonna leave that data cable disconnected. And I'm gonna switch cameras so that you guys can see what's going on. All right. Like I said, this is a pretty active, <laughs> active webinar for me. Lots of moving around. I lower this one a little bit. There you guys should be able to see. Uh, should be able to see what's going on on that gauge. So yeah, we just used the flow box earlier. So I'm going to take take it off of that. Uh, change my device, and we're using a 340 duct tester. Uh, usually, if you're going to measure like a large return, um, open is what it's usually going to be. Sometimes, if you're doing some supplies, uh, smaller flows, things like that, you might have to choke it down to a smaller range, maybe 74. But uh, for a lot of flows, a lot of times you're doing this, uh, open is uh, what's going to handle a lot of these different flows that we're looking at. So I'm just going to take that hood just like I did with the flow finder and cover up, get a good seal over, uh, over that grill, make sure uh, I'm sealed to whether if it's my drywall my, uh, or whatever that thing's attached to. And then I'm just going to use that manual dial uh, to slowly, what I want to do, I want to get channel A down to zero. That fan's starting to kick on now. Sometimes it's easy to overshoot it. That's why uh, having that manual dial is nice. A little over, so I want to inch it back down. Inch it back down. Zero. And you want to really get it as close to zero as you can. Because even if it's off a little bit, uh, it'll throw that flow off. But uh, one thing, whenever you're measuring flows like this, you really want to let uh, your air handler fan run for a little bit and get the steady state. Um, so that usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes. But uh, I did bump my fan speed up here a little bit uh, just so I could use that open range. So we got a little bit different flow than what we got uh, with the flow finder. But uh, that's how you use uh, your duct tester as a flow hood. And one thing that's important to consider, we're measuring today. So you want to make sure you have your fan face in the right direction. So, uh, so we're going to follow that flow. So this is the inlet side of the fan. So that air is going to come in this way, go and pressure match that flow. Uh, so for exhaust, we'll attach the flex to the black side here. Uh, if we were going to measure a supply side, then we would take the fan, flip it around, and uh, and then plug this in to our flex uh, to match it that way. So we're just we're following behind that flow and uh, getting a neutral pressure uh, at the hood here. And uh, our friend uh, Richard Sims down in Naples, Florida, the way that he likes to talk about this is if you want to know how fast a car is going in front of you, uh, you can just follow behind it and look at your speedometer. That's exactly kind of what we're doing here with uh, with these calibrated fans and manometers. And uh, that ASIM flow finder is just kind of a lightweight version of all of this in one. But uh, if you're if you're measuring some returns, there are some cases where you can do total system airflow with this kind of setup here, uh, depending on the return size and how much air it's pulling. So if you have several returns around the house, you can just measure uh, with this and then add them up. Um, that's what I did here at my house. I've got three returns that are, are broken up into different areas and just use the duct tester to add them up. 
Um, you have a little more flow capacity with this than you do with the flow finder. You've got about 800 CFM of flow uh, that you can move uh, with this fan. So a uh, couple of different options there for, for powered flow hoods. So let's see here. So speaking of total system airflow, that's what we will look at next. I guess, Lee, uh, if you're on there, um, now might be a, a, a good time for questions if we had any roll in. Um, yeah, there is just a question about what uh, smoke machine we're using. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, the tiny S handheld fog machine. Uh, that's what this is here. Uh, it's made by a company called Look Solutions out of Germany, but uh, we, uh, they're actually, they make smoke machines for the film industry, but we, uh, we distribute it here in the U.S. for the, the building science and HVAC industries. And yeah, you just hold the button down and discharge it. It comes with two rechargeable batteries and then uh, several of these refillable cartridges. It's just a, a glycol solution like you would see in any other theatrical fog. It's just in a small handheld unit. Good for spot checking for leaks. I think that was the only question we had so far. Okay. Well, I'm going to set things up here for us to measure total system airflow. Let's see, I'll go ahead and switch the camera back around again so you guys can see what's going on. There we go. All right. I'm going to wheel this duct tester out of the way. So I think from where you guys are, you can see this duct coming down. Um, I've got another, another duct tester here that I'm going to use, and this is going to serve as our air handler fan. So, um, it's going to be pulling a return on the inside there. And I'm actually, what I'm going to do is show you how to use your blower fan, larger powered flow hood, so that you can measure basically anything that you would find in a house. Uh, so, for example, if you had a five ton system in a, in a house with just one main return, you know, you can't really do that with a duct tester or an ASIN flow hood, but your blower door definitely has enough fan capacity to do that. So uh, I'll show you how that's set up here. I'll go ahead and get this fan kicked on. So it's pulling some air. Yeah. All right, so we'll go ahead and flip you back so you can see how I have this set up. So what we have here is a Model 5000. And these are just some parts that I ordered offline. So essentially, if you, if you have a blower door, you're really close to having a really large uh, powered flow hood. Uh, what I did was this big black duct is just a uh, industrial 24 inch diameter ventilation duct. And it has a wide opening that you can slip over the side of the fan here and uh, just have some adjustable uh, Velcro straps just to seal that around. And then the way it's attached, we have the same kind of extension poles that we use for our pressure pans and uh, the uh, duct tester flow hood that we use. That's actually a drain pan for a washing machine uh, that I cut a hole into and then put a 24 inch start collar on and sealed it uh, and then attached the other end of that duct there. And then I uh, used some more of that rubber pipe insulation around the edge to give me a seal. So now I have a massive uh, powered flow hood that I can use to measure just about anything. 
Uh, so we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do that today. We have that duck tester uh, that's uh, pulling a return for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook this blower door up to uh, to this manometer. Uh, and so when you do it this way, um, really all you need is just the yellow and the blue. I'll use my data cable too, and just get those plugged in. And leave that there. Let's see, let's get at a better angle so you can see that. Let's see if we can get a look at the fan there. There we go. So I wanna get on the right fan. So again, this is a model 5,000. So I'm gonna change my device uh, to go to that. Here we go, 5,000. Uh, we're gonna start off on the B2. Um, I played around in here yesterday and uh, kind of figured out what I needed. And so I'm set up there. Again, we're gonna do the exact same thing like I just did with the duck tester. We wanna seek that zero, uh, zero pressure, zero pascals on the uh, on channel A here. And uh, just like you're running a blower door test, um, whether if you get there or not, if it's showing two dashes or if it can't get there, that just uh, dictates where you need to go as far as what direction you need to go as far as changing your range, whether you need to open it up more or close it more. But we're gonna start here for now. And uh, I think that should hit it. So we'll hit zero and set. Watch that drop, let it level out. And now we can see we're getting about 270, a little over 270 CFM that we're pulling. And again, we're doing exactly what I just talked about before. Uh, since we're pulling a, uh, since we're trying to measure a return, the inlet side of the fan is facing us. So we're just pulling air in that way and matching that airflow. And once we have a zero Pascals on channel A, we know we've gotten there. So about 270 CFM is what we're seeing. So um, this way, I mean, it's, I probably spent a little over $200 in additional parts uh, to make this do this, uh, as far as the duct, the drain pan, uh, and the collar and, you know, some mastic. Uh, another key part is uh, just like on our, uh, the hood that we sell for the duct tester, I got uh, one of our bulkheads that we use on, on hoods and gauges for that blue tube to, uh, to plug into. I mean, you don't have to use something like that. You can find more or other uh, creative ways to do it. But um, if this is something that you want to do, if building your own flow hood to use your calibrated fans with is something that you're interested in, uh, you can just shoot our, uh, our sales team an email and uh, you can ask for these kinds of things. So that's basically what it looks like here. It just has a little nut on the end. And uh, that way you can just plug a tube right into it and have the, have the right color. Uh, so that way you don't forget uh, what to hook it up to. So, um, so that's an option if that's something that you want to look into. And of course, uh, using the extension poles is nice just to give it a brace between the ceiling and the floor. Uh, obviously if it's in a wall, uh, you might have to hold it and then, uh, run your fan a different, uh, maybe have somebody else run your fan or at least have enough room to where you can get your DM 32 to you to, to run it at the same time. But, uh, but yeah, if you already have a blower door system, you're, you're pretty much there just a couple hundred more bucks and you've got a, a massive powered flow hood to do, uh, uh, total system airflow with. Now, there are several ways you can do total system airflow. Uh, this is one option that a, a lot of people don't realize they have, but uh, another way you can do it is there are passive flow hoods that are out there that are commonly used in the commercial industry that you can measure large returns with. Um, there's flow grids out there that you can uh, plug into a return slot uh, to measure total system airflow that way. Um, all of those tools are, are pretty pricey and just have one function. So um, if that's something that you want to get into and you already have a blower door, it's a less expensive way to get that measurement that you need accurately. So uh, I just wanted to be able to demonstrate that for you just to know that that option is there.
So uh, next I will show you how to run a blower door to measure kitchen exhaust. So I need to make a few more changes here. I'm going to move this cart further out of the way. We'll disconnect from this fan. I've got my assistant here. Hopefully uh, we don't get a package delivered uh, before this webinar is over so he doesn't lose his mind, but he's been good so far. So what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna leave the same duct tester that's over here. I'm gonna keep it running and that's going to simulate my kitchen exhaust fan. Uh, this type of test, when you use a blower door to measure uh, kitchen exhaust is when you come to those houses and they have those monster commercial exhaust hoods. Uh, you know, the cat sucker 5,000, one that'll just pull the spaghetti right off the stove. Uh, I've seen it so many times where people put these massive flow hoods in their houses and houses that are relatively tight with no makeup air. And I've seen multiple occasions where when you run that exhaust hood, it'll pull that house to negative 10 pascals or more. Um, you know, these that have 400 CFM plus. So, uh, so this is how you would measure, how you would measure one of those. You can actually use your blower door to do that. Um, so we'll go ahead and shut this back up. Excuse me, bud. Thank you. You would set up your blower door in the doorway just like you would uh, any other time. And we'll use this manometer here. Um, I'm going to flip this around. So think about it this way. We're going to just imagine me, I'm outside of the house. I know when we usually run a blower door test, we're inside. But uh, I'm going to need to flip this fan around because it, it's matching the same principles that we just talked about before. I want to follow that airflow in. That kitchen exhaust, exhausting air out. So I want to match that pressure. If it's making a 10 Pascal pressure differential, I want to zero that out. And then my blower door will tell me what the flow is. So let me flip this around right quick. And while you're flipping that around, I think the uh, question on everyone's mind right now is, uh, what's your pup's name? Oh, this is Cooley. Um, <laughs> so uh, if, if you follow us on any of the social media outlets out there, we're pretty active on Instagram, Facebook, on, on LinkedIn. Um, every Tuesday, we have a new video. Uh, it's, the video series is called Technical Tuesdays, and uh, I try to keep them under three minutes long. And, but yeah, Cooley and myself will sit and talk about or demonstrate uh, a test procedure. And, uh, but yeah, he's been in all of them so far. I think we have 16 episodes out. So um, they're all on YouTube too. So feel free to go check that out. But yeah, he, uh, he's my assistant in here. So lots, lots of help. Big for a ball, eats lots of treats. Okay, employee of the month. Oh yeah, employee of the month. So, um, that duct tester is not pulling a ton of air. And again, for kitchen exhaust, you know, we're not, we're not going to be dealing with 50 Pascal pressures. Yeah. Sorry. He likes to go between legs too. So he's doing that. Um, in many cases, we'll be talking about maybe 12 Pascals, uh, going down. So you'll never be running this, uh, on, on an open setting or ring a, so, um, I'm going to choke this down to the B2 range. And let's see, I'll go ahead and flip you guys over so that you can see the manometer. My controls on Zoom have wanted to lag a little bit today, so it'll get me there in a second. Here we go. So just so you can see what's happening, there's that duck tester. It's uh, it's pulling a uh, pulling a negative pressure on the on the building here, so it's acting like a kitchen exhaust that's running. Um, that's why I opened that fan up. There's a chamber up there that it's attached to. There we go. Uh, so with that other fan that's attached to it here, I opened it up so that it connects. 
So, uh, so that's behaving like our kitchen exhaust. And let's see, let's, this will work. Put this fan back on. We're not gonna start just yet. So this is a model 6,000. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, it's, it looks identical to the model 5,000, but it's more powerful. With the model 6,000, the max flow is, uh, I'm sorry, with the model 5,000, the model, uh, the max flow is about 6,000 CFM. This one will pull about 8,000. Uh, it has this separate variable speed drive that comes with it. Uh, so that's what we have this fan set to. So we'll just go ahead and set it to that V2 range. And let's see here. Let's give, let's make this a little stronger so that we're, uh, so that we're mimicking more of one of those powerful uh, kitchen examples. There we go. And again, remember we're outside referencing in. So what's really happening, I can just move this over. That's actually a negative that's inside. So that kitchen exhaust is pulling us about negative eight Pascals. And whenever I'm trying to pressure match a small amount of pressure like that, um, usually with the blower door, it's, it'll usually work just fine just to go ahead and just hit set pressure and zero. And we hear that fan kick on. I'm leaving this hole open just, you know, just to simulate some house leakage because it's not going to be a perfectly tight structure. But we can watch this number now or up, however you want to look at it, <laughs> up to zero. Um, one thing that's really, really important to take into consideration here is wind. So please do a baseline test uh, like I just didn't do <laughs> whenever you do uh, this kind of test. Um, since we're dealing with a much lower pressure, you know, we're, when we test houses, we test them at 50 or negative 50 Pascals. But when we get down to lower pressures, like 10 or under, that wind is going to play a much larger role in uh, how accurate that reading is going to be. So if you're trying to measure a big kitchen fan with a blower door like this, uh, and it's a really blustery day, it may not be a wise decision to do this. But if it's relatively calm, you can take a baseline reading, uh, let it run for a little longer, uh, especially if you're using a smart cloth, that'll help some too. But uh, if, you, if you plug that up before you turn the fan on and you see that channel A pressure really bouncing around everywhere, it may not be the best day to do that. But if it's a calm day, uh, you should be okay. So now we're getting there, we're getting closer to uh, that zero reading there. We can watch that get closer. So we're, we're pulling about, 375 CFM. So that would be a relatively strong kitchen exhaust hood uh, that could really pull, especially if it's a house that's relatively tight. I mean, that can pull that house pretty negative if there's no, um, if there's no makeup air system installed uh, to help balance it out. And I've, I've seen that here in Eastern North Carolina way too often uh, where there's just no plan for makeup air. So um, if you're working with the homeowner or working with the client in a situation like this, um, plugging up that manometer to see how negative it goes. And uh, if, you've ever, if you've worked in uh, building science and testing for any length of time, you know that negative is pretty bad. You're, you're just really sucking on that house and just uh, um, exaggerating that leakage. And so that the kitchen exhaust fan is kind of doing what a blower door is doing on the house. And uh, especially on more extreme times of the year, it just brings in more humidity. But uh, being able to control where that makeup air comes from, uh, it saves the kitchen exhaust fan, it keeps it from burning up, and uh, stops all kinds of problems from happening. So 390, it looks like that's where we landed. So close to 400 CFM. So that's, that's a, a pretty good uh, simulation if we're trying to look at uh, uh, one of those strong kitchen exhaust fans there. So.
but yeah, that's how you would use your blower door uh, to do that. Um, we've had cus uh, several customers that have called in and uh, had questions about measuring kitchen exhaust because honestly, it's probably one of the trickiest things to measure in a house. There's, if you're trying to measure kitchen exhaust at the hood, there's really not a great option out there. We've looked into it. Um, you know, for some of those uh, builder grade that uh, builder grade kitchen exhausts, you can use you can use the flow box for that. You know, as long as you're under that 200 CFM uh, range, there. Uh, what a lot of people do, or the right way to do it, is uh, tape around that kitchen exhaust hood with your uh, your grill mask to where you kind of make a funnel to where you get down to this, and then let this pull the reading. Um, Another option for, for stronger fans, you can go back to your duct tester. So uh, the clear flange that comes with the duct tester, you can do something similar. Take your grill mask, tape around to make kind of a funnel to where you can attach this and then you can attach flex uh, to this and then pressure match it that way. Uh, if you have a, a really windy day and you don't, you're not sure that blower door is gonna give you a great reading, uh, you can use your duct to, to pressure match it as well. So there's some options. I mean, none of them are really great. There's not a tool out there that really fits, a, uh, that'll fit any kitchen exhaust hood. Um, you know, they come in all shapes and sizes, but uh, those are uh, some options that you can use. But yeah, for those lower flow, uh, the lower flow kitchen exhaust hoods that you see in a lot of uh, tract built communities uh, and things like that, Blower door is not going to be a really good option. Uh, it's uh, it's that fan is just not going to pull enough pressure on the house to be able to match it and be accurate. So uh, that's where the flow box would come into place for there, uh, or the duct tester, whichever one you'd want to use. But uh, I think uh, let me refer to my cheat sheet here and see if I missed anything. I think uh, that pulls us through the entire uh, demo here. Lee, did we have any more questions come in the box? Uh, does not look like it. Okay. Well, yeah, there's, you know, like I mentioned before, there's, there's some other methods out there for measuring airflow that weren't covered here today. Uh, you know, using a, one of those big uh, passive flow hoods, um, you know, using the flow grid, that's an option too. Uh, but again, those are, you know, additional tools that really just serve one purpose. Um, that's why I like the blower door so much, just because of its versatility. Um, it's not just a blower door. It can be, you know, an airflow measurement tool as well. And just using the manometer to go around and look at room pressures uh, with respect to the main body of the house to see uh, how that distribution system is affecting each room to see if it's balanced or not. So um, the versatility there with the blower door is, you know, one of my favorite things about it. Um, another thing we didn't talk about too, are, are uh, different anemometers that are out there too. So uh, a popular one for measuring some ventilation is the hot wire anemometer. But, um, one of the things I dislike most about it is repeatability. So if you give me one to go take a measurement and if I give you one, you know, there's, you know, there's, uh, those measurements could be a little bit off, uh, depending on how we use it. But, uh, yeah, there's, there's other methods that are out there that are used, but, um, you know, using powered flow hoods, uh, is one of the most accurate uh, that's out there. But uh, it might be worth think. mentioning really quick that the um, the blower door and flex duct method uh, that works really well because we're reaching zero pascal um, across the fan. If we were to try to test a pressure, like if you were going to use that setup to try and blower door test a house, you would run into accuracy issues. So just a, a word yeah. of warning about that. Yeah, exactly. Um, plus, it's an axial fan that you're hooking up a duct to, so you wouldn't have nearly as much uh, flow capacity there, too. That's why we use a uh, centrifugal blower built inside of our duct testers, because when you hook them up to a duct, you really don't lose a whole lot of airflow there, as they would be uh, freestanding. But, uh, yeah, don't, don't test a whole house with a, uh, with a duct strapped to your blower door. You definitely just want to put it in the frame in the cloth and test it that way. 
Uh, looks like we had a couple of questions pop in just now. Um, okay. is, one question was, is there a correction factor for the 24 by 24 uh, inch hood on the flow pine? Uh, no, not on the 24 by 24 inch hood. You can just take that reading as it is. The correction factor is just for the, uh, the 16 inch hood that comes with it. And uh, okay. yeah, we have the manual on our website. If you if you have one and lost yours, you can. Uh, there's a PDF right there. If you find the flow finder on our website, uh, if you go to specs, you'll find the manual there. But uh, yeah, it's it's like on the second or third page. All right, and then the uh, the other question was: Is there an option for the five thousand to increase the CFM ability? An option uh, I'm the assuming they're talking about maximum flow out of that fan which um, we just recommend a different model at that point. Yeah. Well, yeah, if you're using it to, uh, if you're using it as a, as a flow hood to do total system airflow, then yeah, there's, there's not really a, there's not a way to extrapolate that. Um, yeah. That's when this model 6,000 would be a better option just to give you more, uh, just to give you more flow out of that. But, uh, but if you're just using it as a blower door, then yeah, you can, you can, uh, the DM32 will extrapolate that reading for you. Uh, but yeah, not as a flow hood. Okay, cool. And, uh, I think that was it. Right on. Well, we wrapped up about 10 minutes early. Um, if you, uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us. You can shoot me an email. It's just Sam at retrotech.com. Um, give us a follow on social media, check us out on YouTube. Again, we, we have a quick, uh, technical Tuesday video that comes out every week. Uh, so feel free to, uh, to go check those out and shoot us recommendations. Uh, if you see anything on there that we haven't covered that you have questions about, um, we're always taking those into consideration when we make, uh, new videos to upload to help you guys out. So just let us know what kind of issues you're running into and, uh, we can replicate it, shoot a video on it and, uh, that way you guys can have it. Um, it looks like, did we get a couple more questions in Lee? Yeah, we did. So okay. uh, Chris is asking, can the duct tester be used for measuring bath exhaust CFM? Uh, yeah, it can. Uh, you'll be choking it down to a smaller range. Um, usually uh, bath fans run pretty, pretty low, average about, well, just the builder grade fans will run 50 CFM, but you know, if, if there's crimps in the duct or something like that, they're usually lower than that. But uh, yeah, you can do that. Um, it, it works the same way that the, uh, the ACE and flow finder does just, uh, you've got more parts, uh, you've got a duct attached to it and, uh, it has, uh, it has the same, it comes with the same kind of handles that, uh, that I had used in there. So you can attach an extension pole to both sides to brace it uh, between the floor and the ceiling. But, um, but yeah, there's, that should work just fine. All right. And then, um, when getting a total system airflow, you know, pressure matching with the duct tester, how do you convert it to mass flow? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, that might be one that we have to get back to you on. That's not what I have an answer for right now off the top of my head. Yeah, I think um, you can email us at uh, support at retrotech.com. We can follow up on that. I'm assuming you're talking about converting from the pressure across the fan orifice plate to CFM, which the gauge would do automatically. Um, but if that's not the case, uh, reach out to us over email. Cool. Thanks, Lee. And yep. Yeah, Let's see cool. unless well, anyone has any other questions. Um, uh, those were the two that popped up just now. Okay, great. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap this up then. Um, we'll have this posted on our YouTube channel here pretty soon. And uh, appreciate you guys joining us. And uh, again, if you have any questions, reach out to us and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.